It is clear from Jeremiah's prophecy that the seven years were inevitable. However, was the destruction of Jerusalem inevitable? Did the seventy years mean the destruction for Jerusalem? During the seventy years, the Jews would have to serve Babylon, but would the servitude mean exile? For answers to this, we must examine the book of Jeremiah in more detail. Truly, for the full context about the seventy years, it is best to carefully read Jeremiah chapters 25 to 29. It is only then that we can truly understand what Jeremiah meant. For the sake of time, the reading of these chapters would be very good homework. Without this homework, the 70 years just cannot be properly understood. Let us review the contents of these chapters. Chapter 25 opens in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, and Jeremiah delivers his important prophecy about the 70 years. The nation of Judah had not listened to God, and as a consequence of their disobedience, God was sending his servant Nebuchadnezzar. However, it was not just Judah that would be affected, but all these nations all around. These nations would face the prospect of ruin and destruction of their land. Indeed, the land of Judah, overrun with invading armies from Babylon, would become ruined, desolated. Crops would be burned or confiscated. Unfortified towns would easily be taken over, destroyed. However, this was not a Judean problem only. Jeremiah said that all these nations would serve Babylon 70 years. It was around this time that Nebuchadnezzar won a decisive battle at Carchemish in 605 BC, and from that point onward, from the region of Syria to Palestine, it all became his. The entire region, all the nations all around, including Judah, began to serve him. Indeed, the 70 years had begun. The 70 year period of serving Babylon would end when Babylon was punished. This occurred in the year 539 BC when that world power was overthrown. Further on, Jeremiah describes the cup of wrath that would go from nation to nation during the 70 years. All nations, from Judah to Egypt to Media to Elam, all over most of the known world, would be affected by this cup of wrath. These nations would have to serve Babylon, until Babylon itself drank the same cup of wrath and faced the same punishment. But did serving Babylon mean exile to Babylon? Did it literally mean total destruction for these nations? Notice Jeremiah chapter 27 and how it harmonizes with the thoughts of chapter 25. It is clear in this passage that this is before the destruction of Jerusalem, either in the beginning of Zedekiah's reign or possibly at the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim. Here, Jeremiah is told to make a yoke and send this yoke to Judah as well as neighboring nations. God has given all these lands into the hand of his servant, Nebuchadnezzar, and these lands were to serve him and his successors until the time came for his own land. This prophecy came with a warning and a promise. Notice verse 8, But it will be that the nation or kingdom that will not serve him, Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon, and that will not put his neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, I will punish that nation with a sword and with a famine and with a plague, declares Yahweh, until I have destroyed it with my hand. Notice the contrast if they would bring themselves under the Babylonian yoke in verse 11. But the nation that will bring its neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, and will serve him, yet will I leave on its own land, declares Yahweh. And they will till it, and they will live in it. Notice they had to put on the yoke of servitude. If they did, they would serve the king of Babylon in their own land. They would not have to face exile or total destruction during the seventy years, provided they served Babylon. However, those who would not serve under the Babylonian yoke would face destruction and exile. The chapter warns them not to listen to the false prophets who were telling them not to serve Babylon. In chapter 28, Jeremiah confronts just such a false prophet named Hananiah, who declared that within two years God would break the Babylonian yoke and bring back the exiles from Babylon. To demonstrate this, Hananiah took the wooden yoke Jeremiah was using to illustrate his point and broke it. In verse 13 and 14, Hananiah is told, You have broken yoke bars of wood, but you have made in place of them yoke bars of iron. I have put a yoke of iron on the neck of all these nations to serve Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and they will serve him. 
It is in this context that Jeremiah writes his letter found in Jeremiah 29, which is written to those exiled in Nebuchadnezzar's seventh year. He tells them to settle in the land, warns them again not to listen to the false prophets, and assures them that at the fulfillment of the 70 years for Babylon, they would be able to return. Notice the 70 years for Babylon were ongoing. Their hopes were tied up in the end of that period. Therefore, while the 70 years were inevitable, indeed the 70 years of servitude were upon them, the destruction of Jerusalem was not, not as long as they served the king of Babylon. If one reads chapter 36 of Jeremiah, which is set during Jerusalem's final siege, the destruction was not a foregone conclusion even then, had only the king surrendered. But he did not surrender, and Jerusalem was destroyed, and it lay desolate until the end of the seventy years, and all the people that had remained in the land were exiled until the end of the seventy years. What have we learned from considering Jeremiah? First, the destruction of Jerusalem did not initiate the seventy years. In fact, the seventy years preceded the destruction of Jerusalem. The seventy years were a time for the nations to serve under the Babylonian yoke. Second, the destruction and exile were not an inevitable result of the 70 years if any nation would serve Babylon. Unfortunately, Judah was disobedient and reaped exile and destruction as a result. In conclusion, the 70 years cannot be used to calculate the date of Jerusalem's destruction or the period of its desolation. However, the question remains, does the Bible contain anything that would enable us to discern when Jerusalem was destroyed?